Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what HTML is, Hypertext Markup Language. So HTML is a very necessary language in order to be able to create websites and web applications. Basically, one of the things that you have to think about uh, is that if you're going to be building a website or a web application, you're going to need to know multiple different languages. Uh, so to create a basic web application, you'll need to know HTML, you'll need to know CSS, you'll most likely need to know JavaScript, and you'll need to know uh, what's called a server-side um, scripting language, something like PHP or Ruby on Rails. All of these languages together will then create your web application. This is an important thing to understand. A lot of new people, when they get into the tech technology world or the coding world, they always want to know what language or what technology they need to know to be successful. And what I keep trying to explain to people is it's not one language, right? Basically, for any of these types of things, in order to actually create a product anybody can use, you probably need to know five different languages. So when we're talking about creating a web application, again, you're going to be dealing with HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript, most likely something like PHP or Ruby on Rails. Uh, to think about it, just so you understand what's going on, when we're talking about HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, you use this language basically to create the structure of the web page that people are looking at. Uh, so if you're thinking about a, a building metaphor, let's say you're going to be building a building, uh, HTML would be the rafters for the building, it would be the roof for the building, it would be the floor floors for the building would be the foundation for the building. Basically HTML is what would what makes your website look like a website and gives structure uh, in order to put the other uh, programming languages onto. Uh, if CSS, something called cascading style sheets. Essentially, this is what makes your website or your web application look pretty. So it's, it's what allows you to modify the fonts, change font colors, change font sizes, do that types of things. Uh, put shapes, uh, put shapes on your web page or on your web application uh, where you're going to be placing things like icons and all that kind of stuff. You'll be using something called cascading style sheet in order to do that. Uh, when you think about JavaScript, so JavaScript is what gives you uh, the real time interactivity on a web page or web application. So when you scroll over a menu and you get that automatic drop down, that's actually being done by JavaScript. Then you go to the the, the back end uh, programming languages, something like Python or something like Python, PHP, Ruby on Rails. Uh, and basically when you create a form in HTML, when you hit the submit button, the information in that form is then submitted to one of these other scripting languages uh, that that then takes that information and does something such as puts it into a database or stores uh, stores data on a server somewhere. So it's very important to understand when you're thinking about building a web page or a web application, you're going to be dealing with multiple languages. Each one of these languages is used in order to complete a certain task, uh, and the task for HTML is basically just to give you the overall structure of the website that people are going to be interacting with so that you can then put CSS, you can then put JavaScript, you can then have that connect to that backend programming language uh, to actually create something that is useful uh, to the end user. Now I'm going to have to put a warning in here. I'm going to have to put a warning, a warning Will Robinson. If you're hanging around a lot of, you know, freshman college kids, freshman comp sci folks, be careful about calling HTML a programming language. <laughs> I have a video from like a decade ago. Uh, I called it Introduction to HTML Programming. And it's amazing. Ten years later, I'm still just getting blasted with people saying how ridiculous it is to call HTML a programming language. Don't you know that HTML isn't a programming language? So if you're, you're, you're wondering what I'm talking about with this, basically, when you're dealing with HTML, HTML is something called a markup language. Uh, so there's HTML, there's XML, there are a lot of other markup languages back in the day. And basically, again, these markup languages essentially allow you to format documents uh, that will be viewed through things like web browsers. It is important to understand, though, that HTML itself uh, doesn't have uh, any of the requirements of a real programming language. Uh, it doesn't have 
functions. It doesn't have if else statements. It doesn't have loops. It doesn't have any of the things that are required in order to be a real programming language. Why some of us old timers just say HTML programming is because HTML is so vital uh, for creating web applications that do use real programming languages. So JavaScript is a real programming language, PHP, uh, Python, Ruby on Rails, these are real programming languages. Here's the thing, you are going to use HTML forms to submit data to Python, PHP, or Ruby on Rails, right? You are going to create a web page with HTML that will have JavaScript script uh, embedded in that web page uh, when you're going to look at a report so let's say you want to pull a report out of your web application you know sales or something like that Python PHP Ruby on Rails that back end uh, that server language is going to pull the information and then it's actually going to be presented to the end user in a web browser and basically it'll get printed out in HTML uh, and that is going to be the website that that end user is going to see and so it's kind of one of those things just just so you know when people are losing their minds HTML isn't a programming language to be clear to be clear HTML is not a programming language and if you ever get this if you ever get this question on a test say no it's not uh, the reason a lot of old-timers say things like HTML programming is it's so integral to creating an overall web application that at the end of the day it's it's kind of one of those things if, if you're worried about you know whether somebody calls HTML a programming language um, you, you don't have enough to do uh, so again for me uh, being an old timer in this doing technology since 1996 back in the late 90s people used to just say HTML programming it's just what was said right um, Again, it's not technically correct, but at the end of the day, if you're arguing about it, <laughs> if that's if that's all you have to argue about, uh, you probably need to, to start studying and doing a little bit more. So to really understand the power of HTML, hypertext markup language, it is good to understand a little bit of the history that got us uh, to actually have HTML uh, back in the day. One of the things that you have to understand, so if you're, if, you're, if you're young, especially if you're young or if you're new in the technology world, one of the things you may not realize is back before HTML, uh, whenever anybody wrote a, a document using something like a word processor, there was no way uh, most of the time to open that document document in another word processor. Basically, the only way to export a document out of a word processor was literally to print it out and then to import it into another word processor. Somebody had to sit there and, and basically type out what was written. Uh, so back in the days, again, when I was a kid during the 80s, if you had something called WordPerfect, if you had Star Office, uh, Word, way back in the day. Um, basically, if you type something up in WordPerfect, uh, the only way to read that document was to either print it out or literally open that document in WordPerfect. Again, remember back in the day, a uh, piece of software like WordPerfect cost about $100, and that was back in the 1980s, so nowadays that would be two or $300. Um, and so one of the, the real issues there is if I wrote something um, and I simply wanted to, to give that book or give that document to somebody else for them to be able to read they had to have the same word processing software to be able to open it up and simply even be able to to read the document obviously this was a big problem uh, so the value of HTML was HTML was a way to code documents to be able to write documents and then to have uh, different vendors be able to create browsers, their own browsers that were then able to open up those documents so that you could read a document using different people's software. So whether you had Netscape Navigator back in the day, whether you had Internet Explorer, whether you had Firefox, whatever else, if somebody writes a document in HTML, that HTML document can be uh, opened up in different vendors' uh, web browsers and people are actually able uh, to to, to read the document. That was an incredibly valuable thing. Now, again, you know, 
current current day uh, that may seem like just something that's absolutely common and normal uh, but again you go back to the early 90s and there was a big problem somebody wrote a document if you didn't have star office because i had a friend of mine his father for some reason bought star office and so he wrote all this stuff in star office and nobody could ever read his stuff because it was all in star office and we all had, had word perfect right that, that was a big problem uh the other valuable thing with html was again back in the day when you're dealing with word perfect a lot of these old word processors is there was no easy way to do things such as add images uh you know images gifs jpegs especially not video or any of that kind of thing and so what html allowed people to do was they were it allowed people to be able to create these multimedia documents so not only uh in the document uh could you have it written out in text but you could have pictures again may see may seem like who the hell cares now 20 some years ago having pictures like real pictures and documents was a big deal uh, also being able to do things such as be able to play uh, videos or be able to play music or podcasts again having all of that embedded in one single document and then having other other vendors browsers be able to see and interpret that document was a very valuable thing <clears throat> so that's that's why html was valuable from a historical context um, and and why it really took off and became important so now with that history let's start explaining some of the problems that came from that history so that you understand some of the issues that you might be running into if you if you're developing an html and you're dealing with different web browsers so one of the big problems in the technology world is whenever there is an open standard that comes out all the major vendors try to reclose that standard basically you know you have these you have these 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 social justice people out there and they're like okay we're going to create a free Free open standard that anybody can use and then all these major corporations come in basically they they take the standard and then they start adding their own weird little bits to then try to make it proprietary again uh, we had this problem uh, back in the mid to the late 90s when you're dealing with HTML and when you're dealing with web pages so when you're dealing with HTML basically uh, how you format the document uh, is using something called tags we'll talk about this later h1 tags p tags you know image tags that type of thing well one of the issues that we ran into in the 90s is many of these larger corporations they would start creating web browsers uh, and then they would have their web browser be able to understand certain tags uh, that other web browsers didn't understand so if you wanted if you wanted text to blink oh thank golly it's over the 90s were horrible web development in the 90s just made some of the worst worst websites in the world but if you wanted your 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 text to blink or if you wanted your text to scroll if you wanted your text or things to do do specific things it was very interesting because back in the day netscape navigator would use specific tags in order to allow those things to happen internet explorer would use specific tags to let those things to happen and then when firefox came out firefox would would understand specific tags and so you ran into a problem where these different web browsers would understand different tags and so that's why it was important uh, whenever anybody was creating a web application or a website that they would open the website in multiple different browsers to verify that the the HTML that they had written would actually show up in each of the web browsers the way that it was expected uh, not only that but one of the, the problems is uh, when you're thinking about formatting right basically uh, when you format in, in HTML again you're just using these basic tags h1 tags h2 tags h3 tags p tags that type of thing right um, there's no additional format in, in basic HTML there, there's no or very little additional formatting that goes along with those tags and so basically all that formatting is actually built in the web browser itself so again one of the problems you can run into is you can have Netscape Navigator interpret an h1 tag differently than how Internet Explorer would interpret an, H, an h1 tag which may be differently than how Firefox would interpret an h1 tag and now how Safari and how Chrome and how all these different browsers may interpret an h1 tag and so one of the things that you have to be thinking about when you create a web application or when you create a web page is realize that when these different browsers are opening up the exact same HTML document they may be interpreting that HTML document differently uh, based off of how however the, the web browser was coded 
So this is a very important thing. Now, again, in, in current time, modern, modern times, it's not nearly as significant as it was. Again, in, in the mid-90s, it was really horrible. It, it was so bad, literally certain browsers uh, came up with their own tags and things wouldn't work, literally wouldn't work on other browsers. That's not the same world that we're dealing with today, but it is important to know uh, that when you open up a web, the, the exact same web page, whether it's, it, if you open it up in Safari, whether you open it up in Chrome, Internet Explorer, whatever else, you may actually be looking at a document. The end user may be looking at a document that looks slightly or even possibly significantly different simply based on how that uh, that that web browser interprets uh, the HTML that it's reading. So that's something to be thinking about whenever you're gonna be creating uh, web pages or web applications. This is where people talk about having virtual machines on their computer. So if they're, they're web developers, they may actually run multiple virtual machines on their computer. They may have multiple versions of things like browsers. So. I don't know, let's say we're, we're dealing with Google Chrome 20 now. So they may have Google Chrome 20 and Google Chrome 19 and Google Chrome 17 and Google Chrome 16 and Safari 10 and Safari 8 and Safari 9 and so on and so forth. They may have all of these different versions and types of web browsers simply to verify that once they've designed uh, the web page that they've designed, that it will actually show up in the web browsers that in the way that they're expecting. One of the problems you can run into real world is you have your default web browser. You have the web browser you prefer. Again, whether it's a uh, Firefox or Chrome or Safari or whatever else, one of the issues you can run into is if you're developing an HTML page, you're developing your overall uh, web application, if all you use is whatever your default uh, browser is in order to see and interact with that web page, there may be major problems uh, that you're not seeing uh, that are showing up if people try to use Chrome or some other web browser in order to view or interact with the web page. So that's something that you need to be thinking about when you're dealing with HTML and these web technologies. Now, one of the nice things about learning HTML is you need nothing fancy, nothing fancy at all to learn HTML. This is the poor man's coding language, I suppose. Uh, so if you want uh, to be able to write HTML, all you need is a basic text editor. Uh, so if you're in, oh, the Windows world, it'll be Notepad. If you're in the Mac world, it'll be TextEdit. If you're in the Linux world, it'll be GEdit or Vim or something like that. Basically, any text editor uh, will do. Uh, you're just going to simply be typing typing out text uh, in, in, in order to format that text, you're going to be using something called tags. We'll talk about more later in a different class. Uh, so in order to write HTML, all you need is a basic text editor and you can learn HTML. Uh, beyond that, in order to actually be able to view the results, the other good part is you do not need a server. You don't need a shared hosting plan. You don't need to spin up a Linux box, none of that. Basically, remember, HTML documents are simply documents just like PDF um, or you know image files or anything else. Uh, so what's cool about HTML documents is you literally uh, you can code, you can write out your HTML using text uh, notepad or text edit. You can then save uh, that file as a .htm or .html file and then you can simply double click and that document will then open up with whatever your default web browser is so you can see what the results are. Uh, so that's one of the nice things with HTML. And again, uh, some of these other web programming languages such as JavaScript and CSS is that you need nothing fancy in order to learn uh, these languages. Basically, all you need is a text editor uh, and again, to be, be basically save save the file with .htm or .html. So with that, let's go over to the computer so I can actually give you a demonstration, give you an idea of how HTML looks, a little bit of how HTML works, how you will save an HTML document, and then how you'll be able to open up in your web browser. So here we are at my computer. Again, I have a MacBook, but you could be doing this on Windows or Linux or whatever else. Again, all we need is a basic ASCII editor, Notepad, TextEdit, GEdit, whatever you want. Uh, so I'm simply going to open up TextEdit here, and I'm simply going to do a new document. And here, I've just got a blank document. So in order to understand how HTML works, uh, just realize that HTML essentially uses tags uh, to explain what information 
information within an HTML document is. Uh, so uh, if you want to get fancy about it, uh, basically you can open up a tag. So this is opening up the HTML tag. Uh, then we're going to open up what's called the head tag. Uh, we don't need the head tag, so we're just going to close the head tag. Uh, then we're going to go down. We're going to open what's called the body. So basically the body, this is where uh, your actual document will be. Uh, once the body is opened, uh, basically we'll just simply do uh, an H1 tag. So this is called a heading one tag. We'll talk about this later. And we'll simply say, hello world, uh, exclamation. Uh, Where's my exclamation mark? Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. And then we're gonna close uh, the H1 tag. So basically when this opens up in a web browser, this will be big and bold and it'll say a, uh, hello world or pretty big and bold big and bold enough. Then we're going to go down and we're going to use something called the P tag. This is just a paragraph tag for some other information. And we're just going to say, isn't uh, this cool? A couple more exclamations. Then we're going to close the P tag. Then we're going to go down. We're going to close the body tag. So this is the end of the body part of the document. And then we're going to close the HTML tag to say that this HTML uh, document is done. So basically, just, just to give you a basic understanding of how HTML works, what you're doing is you're using these tags. And so what you're going to do is you're going to open a tag and then you're going to close a tag. So the HTML tag is for the entire document. The head tag, basically within the head of the HTML document, this is where you put information that pertains to the entire HTML document. So you can put things like the title there. So the title of the web page would actually be up in the head. There's some other things. Uh, then you come down to the body. The body is the actual document that people will be reading so when they open up this web page this is what they'll see uh, and then we can see again there's different formatting tags uh, for the text there's h1 tags h2 h3 h4 there's p tags there's other tags and so basically this is a heading tag it's going to say hello world and then under that in pretty normal type type it's going to say isn't this cool uh, from this point we just simply go up we do file and then we're going to do save now it's very important it's very important at this point you don't fat finger it and you actually give uh, the extension that it's supposed to have so with this we're just going to call it a test document and then we're going to do test dot and it can either be htm or html so htm or html uh, basically those extensions are opened by whatever your default web browser is um, past that, you can go down, you can say where it's going to be stored. We're just going to dump it on our desktop to make life easier. One of the things that you need to look at is depending on what text editor that you're using, it may try to add a .txt at the end. Uh, so I had this problem back in the day, again, trying to learn HTML. And so I do like test.html and I'd save it. And then I'd have problems because, because basically the uh, text editor that I would using would save it as uh, test.html.txt. So if that happens to you, you need to get rid of that .txt. The end of it needs to be .htmm, it's htm or .html. Uh, then we can hit save. Oh, and when we hit save, we can see it now has shown up here. Uh, uh, on my, my desktop. Again, no server software. I don't have any special things installed. Uh, from there, I can then simply double click and open it up. So it is now opened up in Safari. And so what we can see is it says in big and bold, hello world. And then in smaller paragraph, it says, isn't this cool? Again, we can open this up in different web browsers. So if I go, so basically I'm doing a right click here. I can do open with. And so I can open with in Google Chrome and we can see in Google Chrome, it basically looks the same. And so this is what you would be doing if you're building a web application or an HTML web page. What you would do is you would open it up in multiple uh, different web browsers just to verify that it looks the same. So this is a basic idea of, of what HTML is and kind of sort of how it works. Again, in the rest of these classes, uh, we'll go more into what all of these different tags do uh, and really teach you how to build a basic HTML web page.
Now that you have a bit of an understanding of what HTML is and why it's important, one of the cool things to know about HTML is that it's a very simple coding language. So basically everything you're going to be doing in HTML is going to be related to tags. Again, so tags for uh, whether text is going to be heading, big and bold, or whether it's going to be normal size, whether text is going to be a hyperlink, whether something is going to relate to an image file or something like that. Basically everything within the HTML world is simply done through tags. So the important thing to understand is that if you're trying to figure out how to do something uh, with an HTML document, most likely all you need to do is figure out what tags you need to use. And so you can simply go to Google, type in a Google search, and try to see if there is a tag that allows you to do whatever it is that you're trying to do. And then you can go and figure out what the tag is and what the syntax is. Uh, one of the websites that I like to go to for a basic reference is something called W3Schools. So let's go over to the computer for a second just to show you this web page uh, because especially in the beginning I think W3 schools is a great resource to go to and just see what all your options in HTML are. So this is uh, w3schools.com. Basically, this is their HTML section. So if you've never been to w3schools.com before, I'd highly suggest you go. They have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, blah, blah, blah. And it's all free and it's all open. Uh, they even allow you to try things for yourself and play around. Uh, but for this particular series, we'll be looking at HTML. And so what you can see here is they have a lot of the different things that you can do in HTML, uh, again, that I may not be talking about in my series of classes. So uh, they talk about the ba basic introduction here they talk about again that head the HTML the head the title body so on and so forth but if you go through you can take a look and you can see how to do different things so HTML comments uh, so if I haven't taught you about how to do comments in HTML which I probably won't uh, you can come here and again basically you see how the HTML comment tags work uh, HTML lists you know it shows you how the different lists work and different options that are available to you uh, if you want to do iframe Names, that's there if you want to do blocks uh, that's there and basically what you can see is in the HTML world uh, all you're dealing with is you're dealing with these tags so you open up a tag and then you close a tag and then whatever is in the middle uh, so you can come and again they've got information for forms HTML5 we'll talk about later uh, graphics video files API's all of that type of thing so if you're trying to figure out how to uh, build something into your web page and I haven't talked about it definitely come to w3 schools uh, to take a look because uh, again there's a lot of interesting things nowadays uh, that you can do such as geolocation that's actually built into HTML5 now uh, to really be able to give your application a lot of functionality. So there you go. There's a brief overview of what HTML is and why it matters to you. Again, HTML is one of those languages I would argue everybody needs to know. There's a lot of folks out there, there's a lot of politicians out there that say, everybody needs to learn to code. And I would say as a technology professional, <laughs> I would not agree with that. I don't understand why everybody needs to know JavaScript or everybody needs to know PHP. I really don't understand why everybody needs to know if else statements. But what I will say is everybody probably does need to know HTML. HTML pops up in a lot of ways in the modern world. Again, a lot of times when you're dealing with uh, web documents now, you're actually looking at an HTML web page. Uh, even for things when you're writing web documents. So if you're going to go into WordPress, right? So a lot of people use WordPress. Uh, there's a what's called a WYSIWYG editor, a what you see is what you get editor, and you can type out your document. But what you have to understand is that WYSIWYG editor is basically turning what you're typing out into HTML on the back end. One of the issues you can run into is some of those WYSIWYG editors, they forget to uh, close tags or they leave tags in. And basically, sometimes those WYSIWYG editors can actually make a mess of the back end code. And when you go to look at the document, what you see is not what you get. You're, you look at what you typed and you look at what you're viewing at in the web browser and those two are not the same. Uh, the reason is, is that WYSIWYG editor uh, screwed up uh, when it was... Uh, creating the tags or deleting tags for the back end. And so if you go and you take a look at the source and you know how HTML works, you can look at the source for that HTML and see where one tag wasn't closed or a tag wasn't open or where these little snippets of HTML have been left and they need to be removed. Literally, you can just go in, you, you can clean that out, uh, and then your document will look how it's supposed to. Again, for me, knowing how HTML works, many times it's actually easier for me to go take a look at that HTML 
HTML code and modify the HTML code directly than try to deal with that WYSIWYG editor. Trying to figure out what button I'm supposed to click and what I'm supposed to highlight and all that, that can actually end up being a lot more complicated than time consuming versus simply going to the source, finding, finding the paragraph that I'm dealing with, make my little modifications there and be done with it. So HTML is important, I would argue, for almost anybody again especially working in the, the business office technology world um, and so we're going to be teaching you ba the basics of html in this particular uh, track so as always i enjoy doing this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one if you like the content that i create please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall that includes the videos that includes the notes the diagrams and the code example all of that is freely available and in front of the paywall but if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment you do need to become a member membership is five dollars a month or sixty dollars a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.